All right, I just mailed you this right now. The folder you should have with today's date on it. It's a zip file. Once you unzip it, if you look up on the screen here, this is what's in it. This file, this file, and this file. So the ones in blue right here, those are the ones from your text. That's an accounts payable um, database. I don't remember what the EX stands for. The last one is some kind of like an operation maintenance or something like that. But those are the three databases that you have that are um, in, the, in the PDF that I've given you. So you can grab any one of these files, open them up in your editor of choice, not, not in Word, but you can open them up in there, just highlight the whole thing, and then paste it into, all right, um, you know, once you get into XAMPP, just paste it into MySQL. What I'd like you to do out of those is I'd like you to open up the one called bowlers.sql. I wish I wouldn't have chosen this one, but I did. All right. When you open it up, it's going to look like this. I already have it. So do a control A, control C. It's several thousand lines long. Do a control A, control C to copy it to the clipboard. Then Go into MySQL. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to exit MySQL and get back in again. Then get back into My, you know, get into MySQL like you normally do with your MySQL minus U root. And once you're here, then paste that in. It's going to take probably a good 30 seconds to a minute or so because there's about 3,000 lines that have to get pasted in. I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it again because I'd be getting a bunch of beeps because it would tell me I already have this, I already have this. I don't want to do that. But I'd like you to please paste that in. Does all that make sense? Once you do that, the second sheet I gave you, if you turn it over, there's writing on there. We're going to go through those 15 problems, call them that if you want, that are in there. Now, what I'm going to recommend don't have to do this but what I'm going to recommend is that you bring up either either notepad or notepad plus plus you copy you, you, you write the query in notepad or in notepad plus plus then you copy it to MySQL the advantage of doing that is if you if let's say you don't do that you type it right into the MySQL screen right here all right if you do that if you do that and you make a mistake, then you've got to go back and start hitting your up arrow key, etc. But if you copy it into the editor first, then you've got it right there if you've got to make changes to it. Does that make sense? All right, so I'm going to bring up this. So this is the file I just had you copy in. Create database bowling league example. It's got, as you can see on this drawing that's right here, there are one, two, three, four, five, six tables in there. One that is called bowlers. That's what you'd expect. It's got, all, got the names of all the bowlers that are in the league. One with teams. And that's got all of the teams that are in the league. One with bowler scores. One with tournaments. One with the tournament matches. And one with the games in the tournaments. All right? And I'm not going to lie to you. I literally took these 15 problems that I asked you to do and did them about 10 minutes before class. I've done 13 out of the 15, and we'll do the last two as a class. That's, that's not a problem. But this isn't a great database in that there's, I don't even understand all of it. All right, so the one that you're going to use for, for the, um, your first worksheet that I'm going to give you is going to be that sales orders example database because I think that one is much more reminiscent of real life all right so with that said what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a new window in here so I want to close a bunch of this stuff so I got a lot of a lot of junk open here give me a second I just I don't even know what half this stuff here is
All right, so again, this is what I just had you copy in. If you copied in everything that was in here, it's over 3,000 lines. You hear that? All right, so there's a lot of stuff in there. Now, I'm not sure with what I'm about to tell you, all right? Yeah, take that out, run off another one. <clears throat> I'm not sure with what I'm about to tell you, Yes. I think I need to my Why is that? Oh, you didn't. Did you start up my SQL? Yeah. Did you start up local? It doesn't let you. Yeah, whenever I click it. I would quit and try to bring it up again to see if the same thing happens. <clears throat> yeah, that you may have to. I'm not sure what the problem is. You can debug it, but it might take quite a bit of time to debug it. Yeah. <clears throat> away let's take a look for a second at not all of it but some of the information that's in here all right so you'll notice that we've got some insert statements this is the data all right this isn't all of it this is just the data all right so if we look there's our tournament stuff there's our team stuff so you can tell when you look at this we have what one two three four five six seven eight nine there's 10 teams. Does that make sense? All right. You can tell when you look at the number of bowlers. It looks like there are 32 of them. Does that make sense? Now, I want to tell you why, in some ways, this is a bad database. All right. And I'm going to jump back into here. And I don't have that database active, so I'm going to show my databases. All right, and I want to use bowling league example. All right, so there it is. So I can show my tables. So those are the six tables that you can, you can see right here, right? Those are those six tables. All right, so let's just go through them. And we don't have to do them in alphabetic order, but I'm going to describe right here the bowlers table all right so what's wrong with this table and i want to tell you what i think is wrong with this table okay you'll notice that everything in here can be null that might be okay that might not be okay i'm not going to worry about that but when you create a primary key the primary key cannot be null did everybody hear that Remember, null means unknown, missing, whatever you want to say. A primary key cannot be null. That's a good thing. But when they created this, all they did was they said basically primary key. If they had added when they created this, in addition to saying primary key, in addition to saying that, and it's two words, if they had done this, auto underscore increment you would not have had to put any values into that field now you have to manually if you look at your at your data you had to manually put in a one then a two then a three etc etc it's a little bit more work all right that's the disadvantage the advantage to the way that the author did it here so again, if you look here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to say select bowler ID, bowler, we'll put in, we'll put in the first, first name and then the last name. First name, bowler, last name from bowlers. And there are the 32, oops, there are the 32 bowlers that we have here. And again, it's not that there's anything wrong with what they did. There isn't. 
anything wrong with what they did. All right, you can see I added myself at the end. You're going to add yourself in just a minute. All right, but the point is when we take a look at this, the good news about what they did, the good news about what they did is I can remove any one of these bowlers that are in here. Does it make sense to you that I'm not, I, I don't want you to type this in, but does it make sense to you that I could say, for example, delete from bowlers where bowler ID equal four. Now you tell me, look at that. Who gets removed? Who? Sarah Shesky, it looks like, right? Okay. And since we did not say auto increment there, we could add another new bowler and we could give him or her an ID of four. Does that make sense? Because we've removed it. But if we use auto increment, the good news is it adds all these fours. And it, by default, it's going to add one onto each one. You can change that if you want to. But the disadvantage is if I come in here and I remove Sarah and I add another bowler, they're going to become bowler 33. I've lost that number four. Does that make sense? All right. I believe that you should use auto increment whenever you do this. You do not have to start with one. Maybe you've seen this. I, I always remember when I moved to Rockton, Illinois, I had never seen this before. I remember the first time I was there, I was filling up my gas tank. And there was a sign above each one of the pumps that said, we take personal checks, but they must start with at least number 500. Understand what I'm saying? Okay. So how do people get around that? They started numbering their brand new checks at 500, right? You know, that's an easy way of getting around it. All right. So you can do the same thing with auto increment. You can tell it what to start with. So maybe you want your first customer, instead of being customer one, you want them to be number 1,000. You can do that. Now, with auto increment, by default, it increments by one. There are ways that you can change that, but it's very rare ever that you do. All right. But do you understand the difference between putting it in with and without auto increment? It may sound simple, all right, but you know you can you can talk to database people who will actually disagree over which one is better for the reasons I just gave you, all right. And it's the it's the kind of thing where neither one of them is right and neither one of them is wrong. It's just their opinion on how things should be set up, all right. So if we turn this over and we start looking at the text that's in here, all right, I want to show you a couple things. And if you would, please, I, I don't want you to type for a second. I want you to watch what I'm doing. All right. So the first thing that, that we're told to do in here is to show the query to add yourself to the bowlers table. You can use your own street address, et cetera, or you can make it up. It doesn't matter. And then notice it says explain select count star from bowlers query here. Well, if what I just showed you right here, you can tell by looking at this, there are 33 bowlers in here because it says 33 rows, right? Yours says 32 because you haven't put yourself in yet. But one of the queries that we're going to talk about, not today, but next week sometime, is what's called an aggregate query. So you can type this in right now. Make sure that your, your bowling league example, all right, make sure that's the database you're using. But type in select count star from bowlers and hit enter and notice what you get count star says how many are in this table that's exactly what it says now we can use star but we, we could have said in there instead of star we could have said bowler first name and it would have shown us the same thing bowler last name and it would have shown us the same thing does that make sense okay it may or may not, because I want to show you this. I want to make sure that you understand this. So I'm going to type in that same query, but instead of a star, I'm going to put in here bowler first name. Do you agree? It's the same query that I just put in, except instead of star, I said bowler first name. Correct? All right, hit enter. What do I get? 33. Well, that's kind of an ugly name. I can do the same thing with last name. But you know what? I am going to do the same thing with last name, but 
I'm going to use one of those aliases, and I'm just going to say as la oops, last name. Okay. So now it says I've got 33 last names. There's 33 bowlers in there, right? But as far as the system is concerned right now, those are 33 different last names. Why am I telling you that? Because if you take a look right here, notice there's one, two, three Thompsons, one, two Viscas, two Hernandez, two Hallmarks, etc. Would you agree with that? So if we want to know how many different first names there are in there, we could, or last names, I should say, we can do this, but we can run distinct and put this whole thing here in parentheses. I'd like you to put that query in just so you can see it. All right. Select, space, distinct, paren, count, paren, bowler last name, paren, paren, as last name from bowlers. I'd like you to please put in that particular query. Hit enter, and notice it still gives me 13, which surprised me, but it gave me that because I did it on the count. All right, please look up on the screen here. All right, I'm going to run that exact same query one more time, but I'm going to remove the word count. So I'm going to run it like that, which means I've got to remove one of these parentheses. All right. Now notice, one, it's got 14. So there's only 14 names. Now, please look up on the screen here. Notice what this says. When you've got parentheses like this, it says start on the inside and work your way out. Does what I just said make sense? So it says do this count first. That's going to give us 33. The distinct doesn't mean anything there. It doesn't because it's already got the 33. So here we said just the distinct. So earlier... We typed in this, and I, I'm just going to show it to you like this. All right, we did this, and we got 33, correct? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to run the same thing, but I'm going to reverse, and I'm going to put distinct, whoops, I'm going to put count here, and I'm going to put distinct here. See the difference? All right. Now I'm telling it first to do distinct last names and then give me a count. If I did this right, it should give me 14. And it does. Do you understand the difference between those two queries? Because they are asking for, inf for different information. All right. It's, it's kind of the same thing that if I do this, if I do 6 times 3 divided by 9 as an example, okay? By default, what that does is these, are, these two are on the same level. So it does this, says it's 18, it divides it by 9, and it says the answer is 2, okay? On the other hand, if I do this, if I say 6 times 3 divided by 9, like that, and I put parentheses here, that's one-third, all right? Of course, I would have to pick one where you get the same damn answer both ways. But the point is, let's use let's use different different numbers. <clears throat> How about 14 times 3 divided by 7? So that's going to first do this, give you 42. It's going to divide it by 7. It's going to give you 6. But if I did 14 times 3 divided by 7, it's going to do the 3 divided by 7 first, which is something like 0.42 or something like that. And then it's going to say 14 times 0.42, which is going to give you something like 5.6. You see the difference? So when you are going through and you are asked to give information, one thing you've got to be leery of, and again, I'm going to say this, you might laugh. It isn't meant to be funny. 
all right? And I don't mean this institution. Hear that? I don't mean this institution. But I've worked for a lot of places where the managers are just complete assholes. They have no idea what information they want. They ask you for it, you give it to them, then they get mad at the information you gave them because what they told you they wanted was not what they actually wanted. Does that make sense? It's the same kind of way that in the first two years when I was teaching at Blackhawk Technical College, when we started our program to teach people web design and stuff, I'd have people come in from business and industry, start up mom and pop companies. And they would come in and, and my students would say, okay, I'm going to make you a website. What do you want? Okay. Then they would say, well, I'm not real sure. So we'd start asking them questions. What colors do you like? All right. What kind of fonts do you like? What do you want your website to say, et cetera, et cetera. And then the student would go back and spend about a week. Then we'd have the people come back in and look at it. What do you think they said most of the time? That ain't what I want. I don't want anything like that. And it happened again and again. So we got to the point where I said, when, when people would call and say, could I come in, talk to somebody about possibly creating a website? I'd say yes, but the first thing I would mandate from them is they would have to go out to the Internet and look at some of their competitors and find out what was in their competitor sites that they liked and didn't like. I didn't want them to clone their competitor site. But they might have liked the way they did this and this, but I want the color to be different, et cetera, et cetera. The point is, they went into this with their eyes a little bit more wide open. And they had some kind of an idea as to what it is they were looking for. The problem that you run into today is many managers are in a hurry to just provide information. So they tell you what they want without knowing what they want. All right? So you give them that information. They present it. Guess what? It was the wrong information. Who do they come back and piss and moan to? Who? You. It's your fault. You should have known what they wanted. Yeah, of course, because you can read their minds. With some managers, that's not a hard thing to do because there's not a lot of mind to read. All right? So it's not that difficult a thing. But you, what, you, what you'll notice, because I've worked for plenty of people like this, and it's not give me this information it's, hey, I'm going to start working on this project for you, but as I start, before I invest too much time and effort, I'm coming back to you and say, is this, is this what you actually want? All right? And then I'll do, if they say yes, I'll do a little bit more. Then I'll come back again. Is this what you really want? Because I have not, you know, at, at, at any point then, I've not thrown myself all in to find out that wasn't what they wanted. The other bad thing about doing it the other way is what if it what if it isn't what they want? Now you 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 haven't necessarily wasted a lot of effort, but you've wasted a lot of time, and you only have a certain amount of time typically to get somebody what they want anyway. All right, so let's come in here, and I, I, this is what I want to show you. All right, so I, I want in the past we've done this. Okay, we've come in here and don't don't type this in yet, please. But we've said insert into uh, bowlers. In fact, before we do that, let's do this. Let's describe bowlers. All right. Good, bad, or indifferent. There's like 10 fields in here. Four, five, six, seven, eight. There's 10 fields. You'll notice that none of them, other than the primary key, are mandatory. So I could add Tony, and just all I'd have to put in would be an ID. I wouldn't have to put in his name or anything else. Does all that make sense? Some of this stuff, it's good. For example, not everybody has a phone number. You might have a little kid's bowling league. Wouldn't that be possible? You have a little kid's league, and maybe there's seven or eight-year-olds that don't yet have their own phone. And may, you know, many houses today, you know, when my wife moves down here, I said, are we getting a landline? And her first question was, why the hell should we? Because virtually everyone who calls us now, except for my 88-year-old mother, and her 86-year-old mother, virtually everybody else who calls, calls our cell phones. So why are we paying 30 bucks a month so those two can use that phone number? All right. So again, what I'm saying is that one I could see the no being yes. Most of the rest of it, you'd probably, you know, you might want to make sure that they were mandatory. But it's okay. But what we've done in the past is we've done this. We've said insert 
into bowlers, all right, and then we said in parentheses here each name, so bowler ID, bowler first name, bowler last name, bowler middle init, bowler address, bowler city, bowler state, bowler zip, bowler phone number, and team ID values. Would you agree? That's how we've done it? All right, here's the magic. If you're going to fill in every value, so if you're going to fill in all 10, you don't need to say that in parentheses. You can leave all of this out. If you're filling in everything, you can leave that out. So we could have replaced that by just saying insert into bowlers values. If you're only filling in certain fields, you must list those fields. Does that make sense? This is not an AI or an artificial intelligence system where the system, system can sit there and try to figure out what it is you know. All right? It's not that sophisticated yet. So now I can come in here and I can start. Well, I know that the last one was 32, so yours would be 33, but I'm going to put in here 34. All right? I'm, why am I putting in 34? I already put myself in, correct? All right? And the next thing I want to put in there is the first name. So in single quotes, howdy, the last name, duty, and put in whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. All right? And the middle initial, I'll make A. The address, I'll put 751 Par Road. The city, I'll put in Wentzville. The state, I'll put in Missouri. The zip code, I will put in 63385. The telephone number, you know, I'm just making this up, okay? I'm going to make it 1 800 333 1234. There's, again, there's no meaning there. And the team ID, I'm going to say 6. All right? And it looks like. It worked. Would you agree with that? It looks like it worked. All right. How do I know whether or not it worked? In just a second, so if you are copying that in, I'm going to type in select star from bowlers, and that should be in there as the last name. Correct? All right. Now, do you see the pain in the ass? What, what if I came in here? What if right there I spell last name wrong? You with me? What if right there I spell last name wrong? I'd have to go back up, and I'd have to start hitting this. I'd have to find last name, change it, and then go on with my, you know, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. But if I go in and I come in here, so let me just make this nice and small, all right? Yeah. So if I do come in and open up my own little window here, inside of the editor and I come in and I type in select you know I'm sorry not select insert into bowlers and I put in exactly what I had in before so insert into bowlers bowler ID bowler first name bowler and I'm, I'm going to purposely spell last name wrong. Okay, bowler last name, bowler middle init, uh, bowler address, bowler city, bowler state, bowler zip, Bowler phone number, team ID, 
values. And again, I'm gonna I'm gonna imagine that I'm putting in somebody else. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say uh, 35. Hello. There. We'll make it an O for the middle initial. Um, I'll just put in one, two, three, Main Street. Lake St. Louis, Missouri, 63367. Just again, make up a phone number, 1-555-555-5555. As an example, stupid number, but it's fine. All right. And three. Okay. Now, hopefully you agree with me. There is an error in here, and it's right there, right? I purposely introduced an error. But now I can come in here, I can highlight this, I can come in and paste it in, hit enter, there's an error. There's no field called last name. But I can now go back into here, say, oh, I spelled that wrong. Now I can change that, control A, control C, paste it in. And, oh, look, I spelled, I didn't even mean to do that one, but I spelled middle initial wrong. All right, I again go back in. Where the heck is that? Bowler, middle, init. Copy it again. Paste it in again. And look, now it worked. I think it's easier to do it like that. Plus, what I'm going to require, you don't have to do anything with this one, is just follow along with me. All right? But what I am going to require on the worksheet that I'm going to be passing out, and sorry, it won't be ready till later today, but to that worksheet is I want you to write the queries in there. So now, okay, there's the answer, right? I think you'd agree. This is the answer. So now I just copy that into my document. I don't want you to hand write out anything. That's ridiculous. All right? But again, Notice if I come back in here, just to show you this, we're, we're going on to the next one, but I'm, I'm going to grab this thing here that says values. All right. And notice I'll come in here with 36 and we'll just put in here some junk. We'll come in here and we'll put in, whoops, some more junk. Just to prove this to you, okay? So notice that what I did here was I just said values. And it worked. OK? So if you have to fill in every field, there's really no advantage to putting in all the field names. What if Tony joins the bowling league? All right? And all I know is this. So Tony's going to join the bowling league. But all I know is I'm going to come in here and I know that I know that he's going to be number 37. And I know that he's going to go by Tony and I know that you don't have to tell me cuz I'm probably going to spell it wrong. Is that right? Yeah, all right. Okay. What's your middle initial? R. All right. If all I know is that and I know he's going to be on team 5. You with me? That's all I know. So now I should be able to come in here and say this. Bowler ID, bowler first name, bowler last name, bowler middle init, all right, and team ID. And you know what? Let's pretend Tony's not here. And I didn't know what his middle initial was. With me? Okay. So I'm going to see if this works. All right. So now if I select star from bowlers and we get down to the bottom, notice no, 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 because we allowed nulls, right? So we've got in his ID, his last name, his first name, Again, we pretended we didn't know his middle initial, and I actually put it in there 
It has double quote, double quote, so it went in like an empty string. But he's got a null address, a null city, a null state, a null zip code, a null phone number, and he's on team five. Does all that make sense? All right. These are the kind of things that you have to be leery of when you're a database person. All right. Okay. So let's let's uh, you're gonna what you might want to do is have this page out, and then from the other sheet I gave you, have this page out, so we can go back and forth because we're gonna write. A bunch of queries now all right between now and about 9 10 or so I'm gonna see how many of these things I can get out of here all right so the first one says show the query I'm sorry for every bowler display that bowlers first name middle initial last name and team name so you'll notice from the bowlers table we can get the first name middle initial and last name correct that's where it are where it is rather from the teams table we can get the team name Okay, so we have to do a join. So that query is going to look like this. Now, I'm going to I'm going to suggest I'm going to suggest that you write it the way that I'm going to write it right now. When I get done, when I get done, I'm going to write it another way. You decide which way you prefer. My way is going to have a little bit more typing to do, five or six more characters, but I think it's a better query. So I'm going to say in here B dot first name, B dot last name, B, in fact, what did we ask for? We asked for first name, middle initial, and last name, so middle initial should be second. B dot middle init, in middle initial, was it initial or init? I don't remember. It is middle init. So middle middle init b dot and uh, these are all wrong. Isn't it bowler first name? When you guys, if you see me typing in something, you think, hey, you screwed up. Say something, please. Bowler middle init bowler last name, and I'm going to hit enter there because it's going to scroll off the screen otherwise. T dot team name from bowlers B teams T where B dot team ID equals T dot team ID all right I'll let you put that in we're gonna modify this query the first five or six examples on here are all playing with these first few queries all right I just want to get used to you beating this you know for lack of better words starting to beat some of this stuff into your heads you all have that so I'm gonna hit enter and there they are notice it's not really in any order it's not how do I know that? There I am. And I added myself. There's hello there. There's that FFF. There's Tony. So what order did it put it in? Whatever damn order it feels like putting it in. All right? But the point is, notice what we have there. First name, middle initial, last name, team name. All right? Does all that make sense? Now I want to show you another way you could write this. What I wrote here was what's called a qualified query in other words I put the name of the table dot see that you don't need to do that so in other words I could have rewritten that query like this Then I don't need the aliases. But what I have to say here is for the where, I've got to say where. Now I've got to use the whole name. Bowlers.teamid equal teams.teamid. All right. To me, the first way that I did it 
qualifying it made it much easier for people to understand. You may not agree with that. All right. When I hit enter, I should get the same stuff. Now I'm going to show you yet one more way of doing it. And this is why I use aliases. All right. Because the other way I could write it, and this is how, believe it or not, this is so, how some database people write this query. And it's like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really space it out so you can see everything that I'm doing here. I guess we wanted the middle initial step next. <laughs> See what we've done? We fully qualified every field name by putting the name of the table before it without doing any aliasing. But many people will tell you that's leaving no doubt. All right. And I don't remember if it was in Ethan's class yesterday or in your class yesterday. But I mentioned the fact that, like, when I karaoke, I like it when there's no background singing. Because if I'm going to screw up, I want it all on me. I don't want it where there's there's some background singer who's off key or screws something up, especially if it screws me up. And what I'm doing right here is I'm taking full responsibility. I'm letting you know every table name that every field exists in. Does that make sense? You By no means do you have to do that. And again, same exact results. So I've shown you three or four ways of writing the same query. And I'm not going to sit there and say, this way is the best, or this way is the best. No. Okay, the next one, number three, says, as many of the bowlers have no middle initial, run the same thing. I don't want all these nulls in here. Let me ask you a question. This, this is not, everybody hear me, this is not on your sheet. All right, but what if I wanted to do this? What if I wanted to say, you don't have to type this, select, we'll say bowler first name, bowler last name, just, just those, all right, from bowlers. What if I wanted to select the ones that didn't have a middle initial? What do I write now? I'll get you started. Where? Where what? Middle, middle you're close. Where middle init is null. Now notice what that'll show. Oh, okay, because again, I, it's isn't it middle init? Oh, it's bowler middle init. Lovely. Select bowler first name, bowler last name, from bowlers. Where bowler middle init is null. Those are all the people that don't have. They don't have a middle initial. All right. So if I want to show all the ones, all my bowlers that are in there, I can say is not null. So notice I have 21 here, and you can see who they are. If I hit enter, those are the 16 people right there who do have a middle initial. Does that make sense? Yeah, because we actually put in single quote, single quote. If we had not mentioned that field, it would have been put in as a null. All right. But if you remember, for like for mine, you may or may not, I guess you didn't see it, but I put in Jeffrey P. Scott. For the hello there, I put hello O there, etc. These people all have. So if I really wanted to do that, I could do this. I could say select the first name. The middle initial, all right, do that from bowlers where 
the middle initial is not null. And again, it's spelled wrong. Bowler middle init, there we go, is not null. That should be right. All right. In fact, what I probably should have done, I didn't. Okay. Instead of just their first name and their last name, how about bowler middle init? And the last name from bowlers where the bowler middle init is not null. There you go. Does all that make sense? Again, when we get into this part of the class, there are some people in the class, and I'm not asking, you know, you know what you know. But but what happens all the time is there are some people who are like, now stuff is starting to make sense. This just makes sense. All right? And why? Because you can look at the data itself, and then once you start to realize how to create queries, you can go, oh, that's I gotta just do this. That's where I'm trying to get you. All right. So we did number one, we did number two, we did number three. So number four, run the query again, but concatenate the first name and the last name together. Okay, so there's the first name and the last name, and we'll run the concat function, but we'll put the first name and then a blank space and then the last name. And you know what? That's what it's going to call it. Concat, first name, space, last name. That's a really bad name. I think you'd agree with that. So I'm going to say here, as full name. Full name. From bowlers. That makes sense? I don't care about the T by D right now. I just wanted to run through the concat thing with you. Well, in fact, we'll do the the we'll do a join on that in just a minute to get the same stuff. All right. But I, well, did it work? Well, look. Full name. You can draw your own conclusions as to whether that looks better or whether that looks worse. That's not really what's important. The idea is, can you do a concat to combine these? So I'm going to run the same query. If you look up on the screen here, I'm going to run the same query. All right, so I've got all this as full name. Then I'm going to say comma, team name, as, and I'm going to call it team name, from bowlers, we'll call it, we'll say bowlers B, teams T, where bowler, I don't know, that's B dot team ID, B dot team ID equals T dot team ID. Let's make sure it works first. It did. All right. So there that is. What I want you to start understanding is how you're grouping stuff together. All right. Why? Because I'm giving you 25 problems where you're going to do something very similar to this. All right. You're going to do something very similar to this, but you're going to be doing it on the sales order database. Now, what if we wanted to run this same query? Look up on the screen, please. And we wanted to run the same exact query. Boom. 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 All right. But we wanted to do an order by. All right. So I'm going to say here, order by. Now, look, look on the screen, if you would, please. All the marlins are together, then the sharks, then the terrapins, etc. So it's doing some ordering on its own, all right? But what I want is I want the barracudas, and then I want the marlins, or no, the manatees, then the marlins. I want it in alphabetic order based on the team name. Does that make sense? In fact, let's do it in reverse alphabetic order. So I'm going to say order by, all right? Team name, I guess T dot team name. I don't know if I need that or not. Team name in descending order. So that'll put it my swordfish followed by this, followed by that. Okay. In fact, we'll just do it like that. And hit enter. Now look how it is. The terrapins, followed by the sharks, followed by the orcas, 
followed by the Marlins, etc. Everybody see that? All right. So there that was. I'm going to run the same query again, but I'm going to make one change. All right. And what I want to do, if you look up here, these aren't in order. See this right here? So I want the terrapins to be in order. And maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Okay? So I'm going to say here, I want to order it, but guess what? I created a new thing here called full name. Correct? See this? I, cre I created this thing called full name. Well, I'm going to put in full name, and I also want that in descending order. All right? So let me hit enter. I'll come right back and show you the query. But notice what's in here. All right? A, D, A, C, J. I don't know if you agree with me or not, but that sure as hell to me doesn't look like it's in order. When you use concat like that, it's very hard to put things in the order you want to put them in. So with this query that we saw right here, it's really not working. Did you hear what I said? It really didn't work. But you know what? Damn it. I want it to be in order by team name and then last name and then first name. Are you with me? That's what I want. Well, then I'm going to come back to that query, and I'm going to say, and I'm going to forget the concat. I'm just going to say, in fact, I'll say b.bowler first name, b.bowler last name, t.team ID from bowlers b, teams t, where b dot team id equals t dot team id all right order by t dot team i oops id in descending order we said comma b dot bowler last name comma b dot bowler first name now, I'll come right back to it, but let's look at that. Okay, what doesn't it like? You have to learn to spell, though. Not Bauer, it's Boulder. You see, again, I'm not, I wasn't trying to do this, but if I would keep putting these things inside of Notepad++, it would be much easier than me having to go back and change it like this. So now let's look at it. My team IDs are in order. All right, I, I guess I want a team name, but it, it doesn't really matter. But now look. All my 8s, H-P-P-R. See that? And if I have two people who have the same name, now Mary is before William because M comes before W. Does that make sense? All right. And if I wanted to, because this is how I'd been running the query, I could run the same darn query, but instead of saying team ID, I can say team name there. And I don't want to say team ID. In this, I, even though I could, I'm going to say here team name. Let me ask you a question. See where I've got that where statement? See where it says where b.teamid equal t.teamid? Everybody see that? Would it matter which one I put first? Could I have just as easily said t.teamid equal b.teamid? Of course I can. That's like, is there a difference by saying where a equal b as opposed to where b equal a? All right. So all I did was I changed it. I still spelled Bauer wrong. But now I've got the team names. All right. Does all that make sense? So what we've done basically is we've done number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, 
and pretty much, I guess, number six. All right? It is 9.10. Let's take just 10 minutes, all right? Because I want to come back and, and kind of buzz through the rest of these fairly quickly. So let's come back, please, at 9.20. I'm starting up at 9.20. Even if you're not in here, I'm starting up at 9.20. Because I want to, I want to, I might have to go until 10.15 today, but I want to give you time to play with this stuff yourselves. We have our tutor here. Again, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance last night. I blame my wife for this. But I didn't get a chance last night to, uh, to, to, to finish your worksheet, so I'm going to work on it between 10.15 and 12, try to give it to you by 12. I don't want to give it to you until I've done the key. I don't want to ask you anything where I haven't proven that you can find it. See what I'm saying? I don't want to do that. All right. So again, let's come back, please, at 9.20.